Good afternoon once again, once again, ladies and gentlemen, it is your boy Lewis and I am back. Welcome back to my channel on the Lewis Basketball Network. I am back once again with another banger with yet another video. Make sure you like the video as you come in. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, man, and make sure to share this video. Only helps the channel grow. Truly appreciate it. So what I wanted to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is that um, breaking news. The Los Angeles Cavs are back. The Los Angeles Cavs are back. The Avengers assemble. The Lakers are closing in on acquiring Ty Lue. Teron Lue and his reps are trying to work out a deal with the Los Angeles Lakers. Jeannie Buss and the Lakers were impressed with Ty Lue's two meetings with them, and they are closing in on trying to hire him. Here's what I got to say about this, and I'm going to keep it short and simple. Last year was a circus this past season. LeBron does not get the total blame, but he's a huge part as to why this Lakers season was bad. Not the previous five years. That was on Jeannie Buss and management. Simple as that, okay? This season was a combination of all that with the inclusion of LeBron James and Magic Johnson, as I've said before. If Ty Lue signs and things go wrong again, he's going to be the scapegoat once again like he was in Cleveland. He had health issues coaching LeBron James. But if they want to hire Ty Lue, then that's fine. Hopefully, the next season will be better for the Lakers. Uh, we don't know how it's going to be. I am not a Laker fan. I'm just bringing in the news. So Laker fans, true Laker fans, hopefully, hopefully, this time around, the Lakers will be a much better team. And I think they will be next year. Um, I just hope that Ty Lue makes better coaching decisions in terms of how to tinker lineups. Because if we see the same thing we saw in Cleveland, oh, it's going to be another disaster. And guess what? It's not going to be LeBron's fault. Because remember, is LeBron going to play off the ball or is he going to play his LeBron system? See, that's what we're going to see again, once again. Because right now the expectations are now just make the playoffs. It's not even a championship right now. It's because they don't really have the pieces because LeBron needs a second co-star. So we're going to see what happens. Definitely for sure. We're definitely going to see. So uh, so the Lakers are closing in on Ty Lue. I just hope it doesn't blow up in their faces. And there was reports saying that Phil Jackson spoke to Jeannie. I don't know if it's true or not. That he said that Ty Lue would, is a good, would be a good option you know, to coach LeBron and that he would be a good fit for the Lakers. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens. So, but if it ends up being the wrong choice, then I think Jeannie Buss needs to sell the team, even if this is her father's franchise. Because, again, she's got Linda, she's got Linda Rambis influencing her and making decisions. Once again, you're choosing family. You're choosing family and emotion over using your brains and using... And actually, like, looking and trying to evaluate things the right way. And that's why the Lakers have been such of a, dumps, a dump of a franchise the last six years. Like I said, bringing LeBron only included a bigger circus. But it was already a dumpster fire before LeBron got there. He just made it, like, worse with the collusions. Um, and stay tuned because I will make a future video on top ten reasons on how to fix the NBA, so stay tuned for that. Definitely in terms of why, how I think that the NBA is going to benefit and be better, so stay tuned for that one. Um, but I also wanted to say that Chris Broussard, today on The Herd, in other news, called the Toronto Raptors soft. Now, he was just praising the Toronto Raptors the other day, which I told you that Chris Broussard is nothing but a flip-flop fanboy. I've been saying it for the longest. He flip-flops his narratives. Him and Colin Cowherd, they were both supporters of the Raptors. And now it's looking like if the Sixers right now have a 2-1 edge, the bench has been non-existent these three games. I've told you about Kyle Lowry, and I had a couple of Kyle Lowry fans on my channel talking about how Kyle Lowry's this, Kyle Lowry's that, that you're just hating. Listen, Kyle Lowry can get away with the way he plays against the Magic. This is the Philadelphia 76ers, okay? Now, if I'm Nick Nurse, I would start Van Vliet over Kyle Lowry to light a fire under his ass because Kyle Lowry's got to show up. We, he can't be this inconsistent. And I'm telling you guys once again, the Raptors cannot win a championship with Kyle Lowry as their point guard. Now, the Raptors are missing OG on Unobi, who had append uh, emergency appendectomy surgery, so they are missing him. But they're getting nothing from Van Vliet. Siakam and Kawhi are the only two uh, consistent guys. They're not getting anything from Marcus Saul. He has seven points just two nights ago. Um, no, not two nights ago, last night, sorry. 
But uh, it looked ugly, man. They lost by 21, 116, 95. So this is a very big issue for the Raptors, man. Uh, so their bench is looking real thin. When it was one of the best benches in the NBA and one of the top defensive teams in the league, and they still are. But they, the, the Raptors, they need a third guy. They can't, they, they're not going to win this series if they don't get a balance. Because if Kawhi and Siakam are carrying this team, you can see the Raptors goodbye. And it's most likely, we don't know what Kawhi's decision might be, but it most likely might be that he had, leaves, ends up leaving the Raptors. Because it's like I've said before, I'm not hating on Kyle Lowry. And I've said it before, this is the truth. You see it in the games that Kyle Lowry plays, man. I've been saying it. It's like, oh, you know, Kyle Lowry could do other things, but it's not really impacting in the team like that. And they upgraded DeMar DeRozan to Kawhi Leonard, and you're still kind of seeing similar results, even if this Raptor team is better than last year. That's what people are still not realizing. And it's like every time I watch the Raptors, I'm like, yo, they, if they just get some sort of consistency double-digit scoring by Kyle Lowry, man, the Raptors will be fine, but they're not getting that on a consistent basis. And this is Kyle Lowry's whole career. And this is why I said I said videos ago that Kyle Lowry is the most overrated all-star point guard in NBA history. I've said it because he is known to choke in the big game. He's known to choke in the playoffs. He's known for it. But no, they want to say, oh, you, you, you're hating on Kyle Lowry. Like, uh, no, man. It's like I've watched Kyle Lowry his whole career. He's getting he's gotten big deals with the Raptors, man, with that with the contract he's gotten. He's been with this Raptors franchise for what, six years, seven years? And it's like he's just proven he's just shown me that you really can't win with him. Now you could kind of say the same thing with DeRozan in a sense, too, which I've said. But it's like they're known for this. And it's like Kawhi has been there from the beginning. Kawhi's having an excellent playoffs. Pascal Siakam is having an excellent playoffs, but they don't have a third guy. And Marcus Gasol is getting embarrassed by Embiid right now. Embiid gave you 33, 10, and 5 last night. Embiid got 60 points from the other starters. You got 22 from Butler. Tobias and uh, J.J. Redick gave you. Um, they gave, what was it? I think Ben Simmons had 10. Oh, you know, each of them gave them, uh, whatchamacallit, oh my god, what was it, 16, no, not 16, 14 apiece, so it is what it is, man, but uh, definitely for sure, definitely for sure, you know, this is, and this has been the issue, and it's like, I don't know how the Raptors are going to do if they're going to win, but this is a must win for them, if they don't, if they don't win game four, this series is pretty much over. Even if the Raptors win game five, I don't see them winning game six. So um, it's it's really tough uh, considering that they could be better than this, but they haven't shown it. And it's unfortunate because I, I have picked the Raptors to go kind of deep this year with having Kawhi as a factor. I mean, Anunoby is missing. so But they don't have a consistent third guy. And if they don't get it in this series somehow, it's going to look really bad because the bench only gave 15 points in game three. Only 15. And it's like some of those guys on the bench, they kind of look uncomfortable out there playing against Philadelphia. Uh, and B has, was able to impose his will in game three. And the Sixers had a better, better balance. Um, but we'll see what happens in game four with those guys. Um, but, I, you know, I really want to see a great series. But we'll see what happens with the Raptors, man. But anywho, this is your boy Lewis with another one, man. I just want to know. Let me know what you guys think in the comments of the Raptors versus Sixers in game three. I remember Kawhi Leonard had 14 in the third quarter. He was 6-for-6. Six six. But uh, let me know what you guys think of the Ty Lue situation and on the Raptors with the Sixers in Game 3. As always, man, bless up. One love. Peace. Thanks for watching.